In this video, I'll introduce L'Hopital's rule as a method to find limits of quotients. Here is the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of cosine theta divided by theta minus pi over 2. Pause the video and try to evaluate this limit. Were you able to find a numerical value for this limit? You might have noticed a few things. First, the denominator approaches zero when theta approaches pi over two. Also, the numerator approaches zero when theta approaches pi over two. Taken together, this limit is an example of what is called a type zero over zero indeterminate form because both the numerator and denominator approach zero. There are two typical methods for computing the value of this limit. One option is to approximate it by evaluating the function at angles successively closer to pi over 2. This method produces estimates, which might be very good, but it could take a lot of computation, and sometimes these estimates are inaccurate. The alternative is a formulaic method called L'Hopital's rule, which I'll describe in detail. You use L'Hopital's rule whenever you have a limit of a quotient, that is, when you're dividing one function by another and the quotient appears to approach zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And then the limit of the quotient is equal to the limit of the quotient of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator, provided that both f and g are differentiable and the derivative of g isn't zero. So let's think about how we can use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. First, both cosine of theta and theta minus pi over two are differentiable so we should be able to apply the rule. We already established that this limit is indeterminate of type zero over zero. We'll write an LH over the equal sign to remind us that we're using L'Hopital's rule in this next step. So the limit of this quotient is equal to the limit of a new quotient where, according to the rule, we use the derivatives of the original numerator and denominator. So if f of theta is cosine of theta and g of theta is theta minus pi over two, then we'll take the derivative of f, which is negative sine of theta, and the derivative of g. Since theta is the variable and pi over 2 is a constant, then the derivative of g is just equal to 1. Since negative sine is continuous at theta equals pi over 2, we can now evaluate negative sine theta at theta equals pi over 2, and this will be equal to negative 1. So we've just used L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. Let's look at another example. Here is the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the 5x divided by x squared. Now, if we look at the numerator, this gets larger and larger without bound as x goes to infinity. Similarly, if we look at the denominator, this also gets larger without bound as x goes to infinity. So this limit is indeterminate of type infinity over infinity. Also, both the numerator and denominator are differentiable. One way this is different from the previous example is that we have x going to infinity rather than a number. Technically, that is not what is currently written for L'Hopital's rule, but the rule will still work even if the a is a positive or negative infinity. So we'll apply L'Hopital's rule, which says that we take the derivative of the numerator and denominator. For the numerator, we need to use the chain rule, and we'll get that the derivative is 5 times e to the 5x. For the denominator, the derivative is 2x. Now, if we take a look at this new limit, we can see that the numerator gets larger and larger without bound as x goes to infinity, and the denominator also goes to infinity as x approaches infinity. So this new limit is also of indeterminate type infinity over infinity, and we'll need to apply L'Hopital's rule a second time on this problem. Again, we'll need to use the chain rule for the numerator to get 25e to the 5x, and the derivative of the denominator is going to be 2. This time, the numerator goes to infinity as x gets large, because e to the 5x will continue to grow without bound, but the denominator is always equal to 2, no matter how large x may be. So this is no longer an indeterminate form, and the limit is going to be infinite, because the numerator is growing without bound while the denominator is constant. Let's look at one more example. Here is the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x times the natural log of x. If you just look at the x, this goes to 0 and the natural log of x goes to infinity as x goes to zero. So this initially doesn't look like an indeterminate form, but we can rewrite this limit as the natural log of x divided by one over x. And now, if you look at the numerator, 
this goes to infinity when x goes to 0. And the denominator also goes to infinity as x goes to 0. So this limit is indeterminate type infinity over infinity. Since both the numerator and denominator are differentiable, we'll be able to use L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the numerator is 1 over x, and the derivative of the denominator is negative 1 over x squared. This looks a bit complicated at first, but if you multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator, this simplifies to just the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x, and this limit is equal to 0. Now that we've gone through three examples of how to use the rule, let's think about why this rule works. To do this, let's look back at the first example. There are some formal ways to prove that L'Hopital's rule works, but I'll sketch out a basic idea. Here is a graph of cosine theta in green and theta minus pi over 2 in purple. If we look at the limit as theta gets close to pi over 2, then we're essentially zooming in to look at how the functions behave at this particular value of theta. When we do this, the functions appear linear. So we can replace cosine of theta with the line that is tangent to it at pi over 2. The equation of this line is the slope, that is the derivative of cosine, times theta minus pi over 2. We can also replace theta minus pi over 2 with a line that is tangent to it at pi over 2. The equation of this line is the derivative times theta minus pi over 2. And now we can replace the numerator and denominator in the limit with these approximations. The common terms in the numerator and denominator cancel, leaving us with L'Hopital's rule.